So many of you were not here during Friday's lesson, so I thought I would make a video of what we did. For those of you that were here, you can obviously listen to the whole thing or decide to fast forward to listen to the parts that you need a little more help on. These are the three learning targets that we will have for the day. Please pause the video, read them, and make sure that you understand what the intention for each one of them is. What I would like you to do, the first thing we did in class was we pulled up the graph to equation worksheet that I sent to you on Wednesday. I wanted to make sure that you had the key and if you had any questions on any of the information in that PDF, you should either go to someone that is in our group, ask them to do some collaborative learning or come and see myself. Our second learning target is how to write the equation from a table. So the rules and the way that you do that is that you find the y-intercept first. That's always where we start. Then you would find the slope. You need to pay attention to the slope. Is it negative? Make sure you put that into your equation. Then you're going to put the m and the b into the y equals mx plus b equation and throw in a point to check to see if it works. We didn't actually do that last one in class today. This is similar to something that you would see on your test in. So this is a t-table that is on its side. Sometimes they're up and down. Understanding that we have several parts of a t-table, what I wanna bring your attention to, to begin with, is the idea of the x value. So what I want you to think about when we're talking about the x value is the number that is up on the top and how is that number changing as we move through our table. So you can clearly see that it is changing plus one, plus one. Then I would like to bring your attention to the y value in the table and how is that y value changing? So as you go from one to the next, it is changing at a plus two. All right, moving back into our table, it's important that we take a look at this value right here, the 0, 5. So in case you needed to know, and hopefully you remember this, the y-intercept is the value of y when x is equal to 0. It is written as 0 and then whatever that value is, and in this case it is 5. We use the letter B in the equation Y equals MX plus B. So the next thing I wanna talk about is how we write that equation. So we have Y is equal to MX plus B. I want you to circle these two because that is what we are actually trying to find. Using the highlighter system that I just started, we just found B. Now this M value is going to be a combination of the X and the Y. If you remember that our slope, which is m, is equal to the rise, which is the y value over the run. And also in class, I said I showed you this delta y over delta x. Delta is the Greek letter for change. So how is y changing? y is changing at 2. And how is x changing? x is changing at 1. So 2 divided by 1 would simplify to be m is equal to 2. So when we write our equation, we have y is equal to 2x plus 5. And that is the linear equation for the table represented here. Okay, let's do it again. I'm not going to go through as much of an explanation, but I again want to point out that you have that as our b value. So our b, oops, our b is equal to 7. What we need to find now is our x. So again, we will have our, I'm sorry, is our uh, slope, which is m. So we're going to have the y value, and then we're going to have our x value. If we start with our x value, our change, again, all the way through our table is plus 1. So when we're doing our rise over run, that's 1. And then our y value, hopefully you can see that this is minus 3, minus 3. So that's going to simplify to be m is equal to negative 3. So our equation is going to be y is equal to negative 3x plus 7. 
Now this is the basic learning. We're gonna try a couple that are a little bit more challenging. When you're looking at these two T tables, uh, first of all, they're facing the opposite direction. They're up, down versus sideways. And what I want you to note is that we do not have the value of zero in either table. So we don't know what B is and we need to find B. So let's start with the idea of our growth. And let's see if that can help us find our letter B. So we have our X again and then we have our Y. Let's take a look at our change in X. Our change in X as we go through this entire table is plus two as we head down. Our change in Y as we go down our table is plus three. So when we're talking about, since it, the change is consistent, oh, I see that there is an error here. We're gonna eliminate that. Must have been a bad copy pull for Mrs. Brewer. You can see that our, our change is consistent all the way through. So we can use our formula, which is our slope is equal to the rise over the run. So our slope is equal to three halves. That is our slope. But what we need to do now is we need to go backwards and we need to find our zero, zero value. So let's think about what that's going to look like. If we take the idea of, um, sorry, I was changing my marker to get a different color. If we I take the idea of we need to find when x is equal to zero. Well, as we were growing our table, we were growing by two, agreed? So what we wanna do is we want, if we went back by the normal increase, that would be back by two, but we wanna go back by one which is half, does that make sense? It is half of what we had prior. So if we take two and we divide it, or multiply, if we divide it by two, basically, that's going to give us this two divided by two, which is a growth of one, a decrease of one, and then that will get us to our zero. So we're gonna be subtracting one. So what we wanna do over here is a similar situation. Again, this was increasing by three. And we use that same logic on the Y side where we're dividing by two. So if we end up dividing by two over here, so three divided by two, that's one and a half. So if we subtract minus 1.5, from three, we get 1.5. So our equation here would be y is equal to three halves x plus 1.5. Now, that's a little harder than you would have to know. So if you don't understand it, that's fine. Please just ignore it. But we're gonna do one more just as a double check. Let's take a look at our second table and see what that gives us. So again, we have our y, we have our x, we're going to take a look at the y, and we're going to see how y is changing. y is changing at plus 6, and then again at plus 6. We're going to ignore this value because it's going to make things not great for us. And then let's take a look at our x's. We are adding 2, and then we are adding 2. So hopefully you see that the other thing we do not have is our zero, which would be right in between these two numbers, halfway in between those two numbers. So moving backwards, if we add two to go down, if we were typically going back, we would be going back and we would be subtracting two. We would be minusing two. But again, we wanna do half of that. So we wanna divide that by two. So we're going to subtract one. And one minus one is gonna get us to the zero right there. So if we are doing six divided by two, that would be three. So again, we're gonna be subtracting three. So if we wanna subtract three from that, that would make this value 10. So for each one, it's a three. So how do we write our equation? Our equation would be y is equal to 
Oh, we didn't do our M. Sorry about that, you guys. Our slope is going to be our rise over our run, which is 3. So y is going to be equal to 3x plus 10. Let's throw a point in this one and double check that we did it correct. We're going to use the point 1 for x and 13 for y. So if 13 is equal to 3 times 1 plus 10, 13 is equal to 3 plus 10, 13 is equal to 13. So our equation is, in fact, correct. All right, let's move on. There is a quiz that's out there that will allow you to practice what we just talked about. Uh, the quiz code is right there. It's joinmyquiz.com. And you have until the 27th to finish this out. And I think that that is wrong. I'm going to pause this and double check. Okay, I'm back. It's actually until the 29th. So let me double check. Let me change that. It's running until the 29th. Sorry about that. Okay, moving on. Parallel lines. Parallel lines have the same slope, but have a different y-intercept. Let's think about how that works. We're going to start with the top two. So what I want you to do is to write an equation for the line that is parallel and has a y-intercept of 6. So when you are writing parallel lines, you want to focus in on two pieces. You want to focus in on the slope and then you want to focus in on the y-intercept for each of these. So I'm going to just go ahead and highlight them all while I'm going through, just so that we can understand what we're talking about for our slopes and all of that stuff. So all of our lines are going to have the same slope. So we can go ahead and we can actually get started writing pieces of our lines. So y is going to be equal to what? Well, when we're talking about writing the equation of the line that's parallel, y is going to be equal to 2x because we know that they have to have the same slope. This is the y-intercept. It is b. So y equals 2x plus 6. Next one. The blue is our slope. Must be the same. y is equal to negative 1 half x plus the y-intercept is 6. So that's the easiest way to do it. Now, what we want to start to get into is the idea of what happens when we have a point value. So for the next two, we want the slope, again, to be exactly the same, but we want to calculate the value of b, and we want to do that by using the point I just circled in blue, 2, 10. So again, we know, let's just get started on what we know. We know that y is going to be equal to 3x because we know the slope is going to be the same. What we want to find is b. This is solving an equation for an unknown value, b. Understand that this is the x value and this is the y value of a point on a line. So going back to this equation right here, if I know that y is 10, and that is going to be equal to the slope is staying the same, times the x value, which is 2, plus b. I'm solving for b. So I'm going to use order of operations. I have 10 is equal to 6 plus b. I'm going to make an intentional 0. And b is equal to 4. So I'm going to continue to write my equation plus 4. Let's do it again. So again, we will have y is equal to negative 4x because we know that that's the case. But what we want to do is use this equation and put in the values right there. So we're going to have 10 is going to be equal to negative 4 times 2 plus the value of b. Order of operations, intentional 0. We get 18 is equal to b. So if we continue writing our equation, plus 18. And that is parallel lines. Moving on. Um, again, perpendicular lines we did not get to. So this one's a little bit more challenging, not too much. It's just with the slope. So the slope is something called the negative reciprocal. What is the negative reciprocal? Before we move forward, I want to have that conversation. So a reciprocal, if I had the number 1 half, the reciprocal of 1 half is you are going to flip top and bottom. So the reciprocal of 1 half is 2 over 1. 
So let's do that one more time. I'm going to change that ink because I think that that's really bright. If I had a fraction of 3 over 1, my negative reciprocal, my negative reciprocal would be the flip of that, which would be 1 third as a negative value because this is positive. So if I had a negative 4 fifths, if I want to find the negative reciprocal, because it was negative, it is now positive, and it would be 5 over 4. That is the negative reciprocal of a number. So let's move into this. So we have several equations. We're going to write the equation for the line that is perpendicular. We're going to use the same B. Okay? So what do we need to do? We need to go after our slope and we need to find the negative reciprocal of the slope. So the slope is 3 over 1 and it's positive. So the negative reciprocal will be negative 1 third. So the perpendicular line, y is equal to negative 1 third x plus 5. Let's do it again. This is our slope. Our slope is negative one-third. We're just reversing what we just did. We want to find the negative reciprocal. Hopefully it makes sense that it's three over one. And there is no y-intercept because it goes to the origin. So y is equal to three x. One more time. Here is our slope, five over six. And we want to find the negative reciprocal of that number. It is positive, so it will become negative six over five y is equal to negative 6 fifths x plus 4. Okay, so to finish this up, we're going to try a couple where we have to substitute in the value. So the first thing that we need to do is rewrite our equation with the correct negative reciprocal slope. So if our slope is negative 2 over 1, our negative reciprocal would make it a positive 1 half. So our equation would be y is equal to 1 half x plus b. And we want to use this point right here. So we have 3 is equal to 1 half times 2 plus b. 3 is equal to 2 over 2, which is 1, plus b. Okay, we're going to subtract 1, intentional 0. So we have 2 is equal to b. So that makes... Our new equation, let's use a new color, is y is equal to 1 half x plus 2. Moving on, let's try it one more time. So here is our slope. So we have 1 fourth, and our negative reciprocal of that would be negative 4. We have a new equation, y is equal to negative 4x plus b. We're going to have 3 is equal to negative 4 times 2 plus b. Negative 8 plus b equal to 3. Intentional 0. We have 11 is equal to b. And our equation, y is equal to negative 4x plus 11. Yay! Last thing I have for you is another quizzes with parallel and perpendicular line. Again, Mrs. Brewer. Typing is hard. It is good until the morning of the 29th. Good luck, and hopefully you are keeping up and doing fabulous. So excited for you guys.